Okay, I guess we're going to try this again. Uh, sorry about the technical difficulties here. But this is uh, finally the Public Law Radio show. is heard uh, usually uh, 3 to 5 a.m. GMT, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard. And uh, we're simulcasting over at uh, No Borders Radio, Tina Sort, and TammyPeppermint.org. And you may have heard that segue into the show here, an announcement uh, put out by uh, Mox News, actually on YouTube, that was covering a RT presentation of this uh, the Fogey. Yep, the Fogey. And uh, major, major, major boss, major victory for the lowercase United States. Anyways, this is Bo, and that's my co-host, Tammy, and um, let's see, uh, just want to make sure I got that in there here, because I'm going to turn around after the technical, but yeah, you'll have that with live radio. Or it's uh, my fault, of course, I'm such a tech genius, tech genius, the, um, oh my goodness, so there's a just absolutely overwhelming evidence everywhere of criminal enterprise and confederacy left and right. What do you want to start out with, Bo? Oh, let's see. Okay. Uh, let's just hit some headlines, I guess. Um, this one just came across my desktop. Justice is sweet. $33,000 settlement from the NYPD after officers arrested three men after confusing Jolly Ranchers for crystal meth. In front of candy store. Gosh. Yeah, they're just privateers it going is. after that uh, almighty uh, FRN to offset congressional bankruptcy uh, to be hest of their attorney handlers. How about some good news then? Fidel Castro accuses McCain, John McCain, Israel, of creating ISIS. This is being reported out of the Hill.com. The hill, the hill, as Rome is burning. And what are they saying? They're saying that... Uh, Former Cuban President Fidel Castro is reportedly accusing Senator John McCain, Republican Arizona and Israel, of conspiring to create the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, known as ISIS. Well, we all know that they attacked... Cuba once upon a time and then forced it into agreement once upon a time their naval treaties to traffic human beings together. Fidel Castro in the U.S. Inc. is an arm in arm with this business schematic, of course, and uh, I guess he beat him to the punchline. Beat him to the punchline, said, hey, look, the U.S. created ISIS. Wonder who they're gonna roll on next. Right, well, speaking of that, I guess um, you may have heard of uh, the d death of Andrew Madoff, Bernie Madoff's son, his uh, only, only surviving there. son. Yeah. Forty-eight died of cancer. Um, and this just out today. Uh, exclusive, uh, let's see here, for the uh, Daily Mail, shopping sprees at Ralph Lauren jets to the south of France and a $4.3 million condo, how Andrew Madoff spent a fortune with his lover before Bernie was busted, but claimed right up until his death he was hoodwinked by his father. Absolutely, and his mother, and yeah. That other guy made me do it. It wasn't me flying in those jets or taking those luxuries vacations. Andrew Madoff, 48, died in a New York hospital on Wednesday after a battle with lymphoma. Until the end, he denied knowledge of Bernie's mind-boggling thievery, but he shared in more than $31 million in so-called loans doled out family members by his crooked father who was serving 150 years in prison in uh, North Carolina and uh, before the arrest Andy as he was known to his friends and family was living 
the high life with his girlfriend Catherine Cooper, a one-time model for Fish and Fly magazine. Wow. So. Interesting. Now, just to recap then, you know, the Bertie Madoff situation is. Congress uh, cashed in on that one like you would not believe. Through well, the, right, why don't you explain that for me? It's through the insurance share schematic. And uh, share insurance, of course, is insurance on all of these shares. Not insurance on stock. They're not insuring the stock that people hold in these corporations because they're usually citizens. They insure the shares themselves. So if they drop in value, the insurance kicks in and pays 100% of the value, of course. Well, when Bernie Madoff got busted, Congress came in and devalued all those stocks, sold them for pennies on the dollar, screwed the American citizenship, citizenry, and uh, ran off with not only 100% of the proceeds, but 100% of everything, the derivatives, the shares, everything the government came in and seized. Yeah, so... They to recap, uh, pennies on the dollar, U.S. Inc. cashes in off the insurance schematic, 100% on the dollar. Screwed the American citizenry. I mean, that, that should be the forefront so, of this news broadcast. <laughs> yes, so Bernie Madoff, you know, you know, all right, yeah, he was a bad guy, but... Congress cashed in hand over fist. But he was a fall guy, and Congress... Uh, that's right. He uh, made a killing off of him. And, um, Literally, they killed both of his sons so far. Seems like it. I yeah. mean, but his you wife, know how these things work. His wife, Eve, is still kicking around in their nice, luxurious places. You know, Eve was poking on Madoff so she can have a better and brighter future for herself. That's what makes the male tick. So, uh... Where's her come up? It's exactly. What's well, coming? I'm, I'm waiting. Yep, yeah, I'm waiting on that drum roll. Alright, so, uh... It's been an interesting week. Um, Huffington Post, I mean, all over the place. I, I'm just going to hit, uh... Uh, headlines here for a minute. Uh, minimum wage death. Fast food worker tragically exposes the cost of low-paying jobs. Everybody has a low-paying job. More news on Master Lewis defending the attorney charge for having child porn. He also, I mean, he just about as foul as gets. If you want the transcripts, um, they are available. Uh, just let us know. You can go to the YouTube video and watch it. It's disgusting. Um, St. Louis County sounds like one big shakedown racket targeted at black people, says Slate.com. Did you see that one? It's a beautiful story. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, Congress has always been the ones that has been the racist, and they promote racism to keep us divided, and uh, it's easier to cash in on the controversy. You know, and religion is the same way, specialization, man, female, um, you know, a religion, Catholic, Jews. Judaism, anything, you know, it's just... Divide and conquer. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, Congress has been shaking us down in that sense, since the beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, using their national states through acts of enablement. Those uh, state constitutions, everybody was handed down and doled out by the federal state. It just says that the, the each state, each county is going to act at the behest of Congress to go out and do these sick and disgusting things. Yeah, yeah. Now, these were brought in and started in the 1802 enablement acts. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, there were the state constitutions coming in and then... You know, everybody looks at that, oh, it's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we got our own constitution here now. No. Well, th these are acts of enablement. It's like Hitler's 1933 right. act of enablement. 
federal and we know how well that worked out for everybody now don't we yep federal government started paying its thugs you know each county was basically a thug and you know, all of the actors were just thuggery let's see here Illinois Burger King employees captured a whopper of a snake when a six foot long boa constrictor was discovered in the parking lot. I saw that. It was a beautiful snake, too. It was uh, an albino. Uh, not this one. This wasn't the albino one. Oh. Uh, I did see the albino one. It's somewhere else, though. Um, uh, let's see. It's just sad that they're not taking care of their pets. If, if you want to have a pet like that, you need to take care of it. And don't let it loose uh, later. And if you let it loose, let it loose for somebody who likes those kind of pets. Otherwise, it's going to usually you're not actually saving it or anything because of the climate in North America. Uh, most of these snakes are not from uh, anywhere in the northern hemisphere. And so they suffer greatly when you let them loose. And you're not parenting them. If you want to be a parent to any uh, living being, you need to be taking care of it. It's just sad to see that that's not occurring. Um, more headlines. Small plane crashes. You know, uh, this week... The one in Jamaica? Well, all of them. I mean, it was like back to back to back to back to back and all week we've been watching these plane crashes and car accidents and um, unresponsive plane that one it, it, it looks really really a lot like um, uh, maybe somebody's a group of somebody's is offering somebody else because this is sick this is sick 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 um, these um, from the New York Daily News dot com small cra plane crashes into Atlantic Ocean after flying through restricted airspace. Cirrus SR twenty aircraft ran out of fuel and crashed about fifty miles off the coast of Virginia after its unconscious pilot flew through restricted area of Washington D.C. before being intercepted by two fighter jets. Right, well, this occurred um, back on August thirtieth. Okay, it's only been like five days. Well, then the, the, the being, the pilot, it looks like he was murdered blatantly by these uh, criminal thugs because they, they ran him out of gas. And then they're talking about the evidence they observed, but these are the guys that are killing these individuals. And then again, uh, I believe it was today, uh, the uh, accident that just now occurred, um, that was this morning, seven hours ago, sorry. Plane with the unresponsive pilot crashes off Jamaica. But it's the same, absolutely the same occurrence. Again, the fighter jets appeared, uh, said that this person was probably suffering from epoxia. The odds on these, these occurrences are like improbable, if not impossible of occurring back to back like this yeah the one so there was that one earlier this week from uh, KDVR Denver mm -hmm. um, with an attorney uh, and the attorney was a uh, real estate uh, uh, enthusiast I don't know he was a teacher um, but he was an attorney yeah you know. yeah well this one this morning the one plane with unresponsive pilot crashes off Jamaica do you want to read that one because I just it, you gotta hear it to believe it. A private U.S. plane with an unresponsive pilot crashed into the ocean north of the uh, Caribbean island Friday after a journey of more than 1,400 miles. Ken Glazer, director of development and architectural services, and a partner in, at Buckingham Properties, spoke with CNBC and confirmed that the only two passengers on the plane were his parents, Larry and Jane Glazer. Glazer's family attorney also confirmed this with. CNBC, uh, Major uh, Basil Jarrett of the Jamaican Defense Force said the plane went down about 14 miles, that's 22 kilometers northeast of Port Antonio, and the military sent aircraft to investigate. 
And I well, wonder if they were un under investigation for a crime or something, and maybe they attempted to flee. Or maybe that's why. I, I don't know. I don't know why the USC or whatever had their fighter jets off there. Who knows? So the plane took off at 8.45 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time from the Greater Rochester International Airport in New York. Air traffic controllers were last able to contact the pilot of Sokata TBM 700, a high performance single engine turboprop. And this was a brand new plane, too. This is a 2014 model, I do believe, is, uh, I think CNN covered it. Yeah. Um, pilot followed flight plan with the FAA to fly from Rochester to Naples, Florida. Fighter jets were scrambled at 1130. A.M. Eastern Daylight Time and followed the plane until it reached Cuban airspace when they peeled off, said Preston Schlachter, a uh, spokesman for the North American Aerospace Defense Command and U.S. Northern Command. FlightAware, an aviation tracking website, showed the plane over the Caribbean south of Cuba at about 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. See, it looks like they ran them out of gas. FlightAware identified the plane's tail number. And 900 KN FAA records show that the plane is owned by a company based at the same address as a real estate firm in Rochester. The firm Buckingham Properties is owned by developer Larry Glazer, who is also president of the TBN Owners and Pilots Association. Wow. So. Those are interesting days. Broker. He's a developer is just like a big broker. Yeah. Human trafficker extraordinaire. I mean, this. <clears throat> Horrifying, filthy bird. Well, I noticed the president's hair is getting grayer here as they picture him here near the uh, Stonehenge uh, monument. In like a photograph he, here, his hair is almost as gray as the stones. Absolutely, he's he's matching with his environment. Maybe it's a PR play, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Presidential helicopter, Marine One, made a surprise stop at the Witchshire Monument tonight on Barack Obama's return from the summit in Newport. How cool is this? Spectacular, he exclaimed as he walked among the 4,000-year-old hens in Salisbury Plain. He later said he had wanted to knock Stonehenge off my bucket list. The president had time to meet a select few lucky Brits, including 35 you know, oh, they were lucky. lucky. All these Brits were lucky to meet the, uh, you know, attorney in chief, yeah. uh, clergy for U.S. Congress. The one who sat in the in the Iron Throne. Remember, he's he's special. He's special. President at time. Yeah, let's see here. Blah blah blah. Okay, enough about Obama. Oh, Obama, but his hair is definitely getting gray. That's. Aww. <laughs> That's one thing here. Aww, he's out. got stress. Too bad. Look what they were doing to human beings. My goodness. My goodness. Veteran CNN newsman Bruce Morton dies at 83 after a battle with cancer. Um, Hearts go out to his family. Let's see. Widow whose husband, 38, bled to death in her arms after botched. Tonsillectomy wins $13 million case against surgeon. Oh, but that's sick. Because I, they're that not, is sick. I got they're another. not botched because they, they happen too often to be accidental. Ah. Remember that little girl they killed last year? They killed her um, and they made a big stink about keeping her on life support. Uh, in order to, you know, make sure that the attorneys were cashing in real big on, on her death and demise. And the other one that was, that she went under the knife for surgery on her teeth, a little girl. And again, the same thing. They're just killing kids and then pretending it was an accident and casting it on the back end and keeping them alive on life support and terrorizing their families. These things are filthy. Well, yeah, I don't like people being rented out by the legal system. I mean, people need to be held accountable. Absolutely. I mean, okay, yeah, the, the money helps, I guess, but that's not the point. People that uh, 
are responsible for harm and death, they need to be held accountable. Or, or how about locking people up, like those guys that got locked up for 30 years, and they won a $41 million lawsuit, but does that really, really get their 30 years in prison back? No, it was terrible. I mean, these things are horrifying, what the FBI has done, and now, you know, that thing in Ferguson, I mean, it's just sick. But we were talking about these, quote, coincidental deaths recently, and it looks like a priest whacked somebody or something, because this is odd. This was in the New York Daily News com today. Uh, Chicago mom of two killed when gargoyle plummets three stories off historic church. Sarah Bean, 34, was headed for a lunchtime date Thursday with fiancé Lance Johnson when the piece of facade dropped directly onto her head, killing her. The building, a National Historic Landmark that was erected in 1874, had failed in a series of inspections over the last few years. Family members were left in shock by the freak accident. A Chicago mom of two was killed when pieces of gargoyle fell off of a historic city church and plummeted three stories to the sidewalk below, striking the woman where she stood with her fiancé. The couple's lunchtime date Thursday turned into tragedy when the heavy ornamental piece hit Sarah Bean, 34, directly on the head, opening a large wound and sending her bull, Lance Johnson, into hysterics, witnesses told the Chicago Tribune. Quote, I saw that crack on her head and thought she's definitely dead, witness Broderick Adams told the newspaper as he traced his finger from his forehead to the back of his head. The soon-to-be Mary couple was standing at Colter Colerton Street and Michigan Avenue in the South Loop section of the city around noon when a pe metal piece broke free of the Second Presbyterian Church and struck a gargoyle which broke loose and fell on the unsuspecting woman according to the city's buildings department. She was pronounced, pronounced dead about an hour later. Bean was scheduled to work Thursday evening at Lurie Children's Hospital, where she worked at, in a pediatric intensive care unit, the Tribune reported. The longtime couple shared two sons and lived just blocks away from the church. Quote, she was a beautiful woman. Whoops. Sorry about that. It began refreshing on me. Um, sorry, she was a beautiful person, her brother Michael Willis told the newspaper. This is not good. This is not something you expect at all, end quote. The church, built in 1874, was named in a city landmark in 1977 and a national historical landmark in 2013. It was interesting that she was a pediatric nurse. Uh, you know, as you know, uh, in places of holding prisoners of war, and I'm wondering if she was a victim of this recent onslaught as they try to take out those with information against them, and I'd like to see the murderers brought to justice. I mean, these things are sick. We don't want to see anybody killed. We want to see them held criminally accountable for their works. Uh, a bowl of deaths past 2000 as Liberia shuts down contaminated police station in Sierra Leone's capital crumbles. The bowl outbreak in West Africa has accelerated quickly with almost a thousand deaths in last month alone, according to the latest World Health Organization figures. Uh, let's see, I got a 60 foot pit bull asteroid. As the headline reads, uh, we'll come ten times closer to our planet than the moon on Sunday. Uh, it's closest approach, a 20 meter long asteroid 2014 RC, it will be above New Zealand on September 7th at about 2018 BST. Amateur astronomers with telescopes might be able to. Uh, uh, to glimpse the appearance, NASA said. Now this Ukraine and Russia thing this week uh, spiked up a little bit. I, I thought it was very interesting that Russia and the Ukraine have entered into truce. Well, all of a sudden, Russia captures one of the Ukrainian CIA agents this week and uh, 
now everybody's all making a show and everything, but these are two actors. What was Ukrainian CIA doing on the ground, and what is Russia doing picking them up and putting on this presentation if they didn't want the sheeple to believe that something was going on? Everybody's got to stop and think about these things for a minute, because killing human beings uh, whilst corporations pretend to be at war is not good, not good for humanity at all. You know, they're doing the same thing in Israel, they're doing the same thing in Syria, and these actors just need to be rounded up and arrested for presenting that there's a war and killing human beings. That's just, enough is enough. Right, yeah, time and again throughout history they've always created the intelligence, and, and we can see, indeed, this all spelled out and carried out, um, through the 1947 National Security Act. And, and we, we all saw a small sample recently with the Michael Ferguson case. You know, we all were exposed to this. And um, let me go get that link because it's, it's just absolutely profound that Darren Wilson has used a... Uh, photo of what was said to be himself when it wasn't. Yeah, which you read earlier. Well, it was my fault. The technical difficulty was that I was playing the Leaving the Farm audio over our voice. Oh, okay, let's read it again then. Unarmed teen Michael Brown was fatally shot by Officer Darren Wilson in Ferguson, Missouri on August 9th, but the circumstances leading up to his death remain unclear. Though Ferguson police have said that Wilson's face was injured in an altercation with Brown moments before the shooting. Wilson has yet to come forward and speak publicly. On Tuesday, Chicago firefighter Kevin O'Grady shared a Facebook photo he claimed showed injured Wilson in the hospital after the incident. As it turns out, the man pictured is not Darren Wilson, but that didn't stop the images from going viral. It's the sheep will just suck it up, uh, especially the people re-feeding it, you know, you know, want to promote racism and all the rest of it. The man in the photo is actually motocross rider Jim McNeil, who died in a crash while practicing at the Texas Motor Speedway in 2011. And the photo they were circulating around was taken in 2006 after a motor accident at a friend's house. So it wasn't even Darren Wilson, this photo, as he was claiming. And that's why he wasn't allowing any reporters to take pictures of him and stuff. And he wasn't in the public eye back when he shot Michael Brown without cause. Because now that they come out with these photos are not Darren Wilson, where is the evidence of any cause to have murdered a child? He was trying to justify murder. That's right. And, um, you know, they, um, you know, it, it, it just can't, it just can't say there's evidence and not show any evidence. Uh, well, despite the fact that these two men share barely a passing resemblance, um, to one another. The bogus image posted by Kevin O'Grady had racked up nearly 50,000 shares by Thursday evening and had been circulated on Twitter and parts of the blogosphere. Some who reshared the image seemed to take it as proof that Brown had attacked Wilson, thereby justifying the, shi the six shots that Wilson fired into Brown's body. And this is being reported out of the HuffingtonPost.com today. And um, you can go there and see the actual tweets. And I urge everybody to go there and look at those actual tweets because those tweets were Twittered and tweeted by other FBI agents because they know by looking at Darren Wilson that he did never, didn't ever have any injury. And any officer involved in the cover-up of this murder is also going to be held accountable for the murder of this child. That's right. Lies are 
adverse to the public law. This isn't even the first photo misidentification to come out of the Ferguson incident. August Kansas City Police Department Officer Mark Catron posted an image on Facebook of a young man he claimed was Michael Brown. Man in the pictures, uh, and the picture was pointing uh, a gun at the camera and biting down on a wad of cash. Now, Catrum's caption for the image read, I'm sure young Michael Brown is innocent and just misunderstood. I'm sure he's a pillar of the Ferguson community. Of course, being facetious. Now, this is absolutely horrifying to see. They used a false representation of Michael Brown by which to attempt to teach a populace that Michael Brown was some violent character. Indoctrinate's a better word. That is disgusting to see the FBI can stoop so low as to murder a child in cold blood and then try to blame him for his own murder. And for what? To promote racism? Absolutely. And hatred of humanity. This is sick. Well, let's see more Ebola news here. Third U.S. missionary, 51, infected with deadly Ebola virus in Lib uh, Liberia, arrives in Nebraska for treatment. U.S. Health Ministry a missionary infected with Ebola virus has entered the Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha for treatment after being flown in from West Africa. So, Ebola is still spreading. Uh, let's see here. Snowden leak exposes U.S. plan to spy on foreign businesses for profit. And a headline at the RT. In 2009, intelligence document provided to journalists by former government contractor Edward Snowden suggests the United States weighed some day uh, conducting espionage to prevent losing its economic prowess to other countries. The document, published first by the Intercept on Friday this week, outlines tactics the American intelligence community may implement in the future in the event of certain scenarios, including one in which the United States, and this should read United States Incorporated, because the United States, uh, they're not the United States, they're United States Incorporated. Uh, technological and innovative edge slips in the year 2025. In the event that the U.S. may lose its advantage by the Quadrennial Intelligence Community Review's final report reads in part, then a multi-pronged systematic effort to gather open source and proprietary information Absolutely. through overt means, clandestine uh, penetration through physical and cyber means, and counterintelligence could be undertaken by American agencies. Absolutely, and, and it says that all in the 1947 National Security Act. And, um, you know, it says the United States Incorporated is going to do whatever is most efficient for business. So, uh, all of you national states out there, if you don't like it, you can uh, choose another form of government, perhaps. It's always on the table. Joan Rivers' funeral set to take place on Sunday uh, as the headline reads Joan Rivers daughter Melissa visits funeral home to make arrangements for Sunday service as comedian's former voice coach questions procedures at Manhattan Clinic absolutely so now they're going to go after the clinic here absolutely they're responsible for her death yes so yeah yes. Melissa Spotted Friday visiting Frank E. Campbell Funeral Home on the Upper East Side, which is handling the 81-year-old star's final arrangements. Joan Rivers wrote in her 2013 memoir that she wanted her funeral to be a Hollywood affair with movie stars like Meryl Streep and paparazzi. Meanwhile, the Manhattan Clinic 
where Rivers had undergone surgery has come under intense scrutiny, prompting an investigation. Absolutely. And uh, remember that was a routine procedure she went in for not long after uh, she uh, was heard saying that uh, Michelle Obama was a transgender. Right, right. I remember that. I mean, that was a big sting, but uh, it's interesting that it looks like a whack. I, she, I, I reviewed that to you earlier. She also said the president was gay. Yeah, well, then it, it just... Well, I guess if she was transgender, that would that would be hand and foot, right? Right, right. Well, all right. As the Romans did uh, from the Atlantic dot com, all right. And um, this is written by it looks like uh, Cullen Murphy, the author of Are We Rome? Talks about the American Empire's parallel with the ancient republic and how we can learn from the Caesar's mistakes. Imagine a small agrarian republic that gradually grows into the world's greatest military and cultural superpower. Over time, as public power is concentrated in the hands of a relatively small group of wealthy private citizens, that ruling elite falls increase, increasingly out of touch with the world beyond its borders. Those borders porous and steadily expanding, becoming ever more difficult to manage and defend. Faltering under the growing burden of policing them, the military is forced to recruit considerable mercenary support to handle conflicts that might arise as well as those already underway, eventually losing its grip on power both internally and externally. The superpower enters a state of accelerating decline, ultimately fading into a shadow of its former glory. Sound familiar? This describes the predicament the Roman Empire faced toward the end of the third century CE, one of one with obvious and disturbing parallels to the situation that confronts the United States Incorporated today. Such resonance have brought the analogy between Rome and America to the minds of more than one commenter, including most recently the author and editor Colin Murphy in his new book, Are We Rome? fall of an empire and the fate of America, Murphy takes a closer look at the oft-made comparison between the Roman Empire and the United States Incorporated. I'm just adding the word incorporated in there so you guys know what's what. I just love his last name. Remember Murphy's Law? What's Murphy's Law? And if it can go wrong, it will. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, where I leave off here. Uh, let's see here. Le uh, United States Incorporated leading the reader on an entertaining jaunt through precincts, agents, and modern as he sets out to test the analogies, validity, and relevance. Well, we can test it right now. Let me get the uh, next link up for everybody. Um, this will only take me a moment, folks. Uh, and we've touched on this before, but uh, I'll go take the reins here. Okay, well, let's we'll look at the Treaty of Westphalia. And um, it's, it's rather long, I, I know, and I'm not going to read all of it, but it uh, starts out, uh, Peace Treaty Between the Roman Empire emperor and the king of France and the respective allies. In the name of the most holy and individual trinity, be it known to all that everyone whom it may concern or whom in any manner it may belong, that for many years past, discords and civil divisions being stirred up in the Roman Empire, which increased to such a degree that not only all Germany, but also the neighboring kingdoms, in France particularly, have been involved and the disorders of a long and cruel war. And in the first place, between the most serene and most uh, pushing prince and lord, Ferdinand II, of famous memory, elected a uh, Roman emperor, always August, king of Germany, Hungary, Bohemia, Dalmatia, Croatia, 
Slavonia, Slavonia, Archduke of Austria, Duke of Burgundy, Brabant, Syria, which uh, I believe is called Syria now, yeah. uh, Car Carinthia, Carniola, Marquis of Moravia, Duke of Luxem Luxembourg, the Higher and Lower Silesia of Württemberg and Tech, Prince of Subia, Count of Habsburg, Tyrol, Kyberg, and Gorcia Marquis of the Sacred Roman Empire, Lord of Bregovia of the Higher and Lower Lusak, and this goes on and on and on forever. Yeah, all of the corporations that are now found as members of the International Monetary Fund. In a nutshell, that that is Rome, and it's overlorded by Congress, who got global governance in 1941 with the Atlantic Charter. The very bottom of this document, and um, that should be noted, the very last um, sentence um, says everything, because it says it's going to be that style that is now known as the quote United States of America ultimately because it, it refers to the style in the last sentence or this the last paragraph. Yeah, yeah. And you scroll all the way down the bottom yeah. through all these articles which are articles of incorporation. Um and I'll read it I guess. In the name of the one and the other bench M Mark Otto of Strasbourg, M. John James, Wolf of Rathbun, M. David Gloxnius of Lubeck, and M. Louis Christopher Cress of Crescentstein. Yeah, those are all metaphors. It's just the bank and the, their affiliates. All syndic, senators, counselors, and advocates of the Republic of Nuremberg, who, with their proper hands and seals, have signed and sealed this present treaty of peace, and which said deputies of the several orders have engaged to procure the ratifications of their superiors in the prefixed time and in the manner it has been uh, covenanted, leaving... Promised. Huh? Promise. Covenanted is the League of Nations covenant. The covenant of the League of Nations that you saw later in 1924, but this is the first promise. Leaving the liberty to the other plenipotentiaries of state, plenipotentiaries of states to sign it. If they think it convenient and send for the ratifications of their superiors and that on condition that by the subscription of the above said ambassadors and deputies, all and every one of the other states who shall abstain from signing and ratifying the present treaty shall be no less obligated. Obligated. No less. They're obligating every one of them to enter into this confederacy in this document. To maintain and observe what is contained in this present treaty of pacification. Peace. And if they had subscribed and ratified it, and no protestation or contradiction of right. the council or no one was of, protesting. of direction in the Roman Empire shall be valid or received in respect to the subscription and said deputies have made. Right. Um, until you take over Rome and, and say, no, 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 human trafficking is unlawful on its face, and genocide, of course, is unlawful, honey. Done passed and concluded at Munster in Westphalia, the 24th day of October, 1648. So, this was the reorganization of Rome. And... This is why the House of Lords came in with the 1666 SGKY Act. They were trying to say, um, excuse me, you were all just stolen. This is how it went. And this is how you get out of it if you ever get around here to this thing again. <laughs> and, more, and more likely, I bet you dirt to dollars. You know, I mean, it's pretty much, uh, you know, a fact uh, by their given uh, modus operandi, which is 
essentially the same then as it was today, they started the fire. They had one of their cronies go out there right. and start the fire of London. Right. That was, the, again, it was the FBI or whatever it was called then. And, um, you know, it, it happened again in 1924. In 1924, all of a sudden, the Lord High Steward disappeared from the House of Lords. That position was just gone. And nobody's been there since 1924, which happened to be the same year as the Covenant of the League of Nations. That's why everybody found themselves in so much peril, because they removed all of the lords that were actually there to protect humanity, and then they started raising everybody at a really fast rate of speed, which they do every 300 years when they want to off a populace. Yeah, now they just do it slowly through... Uh... Well, sometimes they do it slowly if you're lucky, I guess, right? I mean... The medical industry. The medical industry, 42. the food industrial complex, right. putting all these poisons in our food. And it's millions that are dying every day. Not thousands and not tens. Millions of human beings are dying every day through the medical industry, psychological industry, food industry, all of these different acts and, and everything. It's just a constant, continual farm. The Veterans Administration, yeah. uh, here's a story right here that ties in with that. Navy veteran loses 70% of his nose after two and a half year wait at VA hospital. Edward Lair, a 76-year-old Navy veteran, was kept waiting at the Phoenix VA hospital for a biopsy so long that the cancer spread through much of his nose. And, and they do it on purpose. In Arizona, they found evidence that there were lists drawn up. Just like in Nazi Germany, folks, lists of VA veterans subject to accidental weight resulting in death. Now, it's got to be stopped. Stopped in its tracks. It has to stop. We cannot sustain any more human loss. Let's see, U.S. adds just 142,000 jobs in August, as it is revealed incomes under Obama have only risen for the richest 10%. U.S. employers added just 142,000 jobs in August, snapping the six-month streak of hiring above 200,000 and posting the smallest gain in eight months. All right, of course, we know how good this quote-unquote economy is. Just... Revealed uh, U.S. ambassador to Libya would be alive if CIA security team had not been ordered to stand down from Benghazi rescue mission, new book reveals. Yeah, the, it was on the directives that people died. It wasn't an accident. Right. That's, yeah. That's I mean, the whole point. Hillary, but like Hillary says, what difference does it make? She was a clearinghouse. It didn't make a difference to her because that was her function, was to kill people accidentally. Of course. Five commandos say they were ready to move the diplomatic compound, uh, move to the diplomatic compound in Benghazi, Libya, within five minutes of the 2012 attacks starting, but were told to wait by a CIA chief named only as Bob. Absolutely, because that's how it works. That's how Hillary Clinton does business as Secretary of State, which is defined as a clearinghouse discharging congressional bankruptcy by allowing human death. Here, this is kind of an interesting one here. Um, you all remember the nine-year-old girl that uh, shot her instructor at a uh, shooting range uh, in Arizona um, when the uh, automatic weapon pulled back over her head shooting um, several bullets into the instructor's head. He died later at the hospital. Revealed! Devastated father of nine who shot dead instructor in Uzi gun range horror is an investment banker. Oh. Alex McLellan is an Ivy League educated banker from New Jersey. He and his wife Allison released a statement to say they are devastated by the accident at the Arizona fire. Devastated. Why would they 
okay, what were you training your daughter to do with a Uzi? Yeah. As a banker. Protect bankers. Protect bankers. Look at that. He was going to throw her under the bus. This is terrible. Don't don't use your kids as shields or weapons against each other. That's filthy. Filthy. Uh, let's see here. Um, another headline. More than one in ten girls around the world have been raped or sexually abused by the age of 20. Shocking UNICEF report finds. Absolutely. And they're all... It's the business schematic. As we heard... In the breaking report from RT. The report also shows that a fifth of murder victims worldwide are under 20, resulting in 95,000 deaths in 2012, while a third of young married girls have been victims of domestic abuse. Absolutely, and normally it's by a female partner. Um, because uh, psychopaths have a tendency of viewing, or they do, view human beings as objects and um, a lot of times uh, quote uh, whom somebody thinks is a lesbian is actually a predator they're not there as your partner they don't love you they're viewing you as an object and that sets everybody up for for danger of domestic violence and abuse stripper mom who left her children two and six starving in a bedroom while she worked as an escort is jailed for 20 years a Texas mom has been convicted of starving her two young girls, 24-year-old uh, Kayla McClintock was found guilty of two counts of injury to a child by omission. That's a good one. I mean, I'm glad that, uh, yeah, I mean, she's not doing any good to her kids, so put her in jail. Right. Yeah, don't, don't starve your kids. Prostitution is not unlawful. Starving your I, kids. I could care less about that if it didn't, uh, you know, right. have to affect her children. Right, right. And it, it just, prostitution, of course, shows that she had a means of feeding the children that were starving. So it, it's just terrible. That's good. 20 years is good. Yeah, former Republican Party spokesman comes out as gay and says he wants to legalize same sex marriage. Well, why? Of course they do. They want those extra. You know, Fun. negotiable instruments. Right. Okay. If you're gay, you're a human being. You don't have to be identified as to anything other than just human. And when these actors come out and say well, they want gay rights, they're the ones that stole the, those rights from you in the first place. And they did that through other actions like HIPAA and FERPA that bars you from accessing your own inheritance or your own medical mm. records or your own everything. An attorney jumps in there. Uh, what you want to do is get back to just being human. Don't don't identify yourself as something you are not. You you're just human. Just be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that. I mean, getting a, a marriage license. You know, asking the federal state for permission for anything is patronizing that thing. Now, we've already found the federal state to be guilty of human trafficking and genocide, so why would you be patronizing it by getting their licenses and asking their permission for things? Petitioning. Petitioning is a form of patronizing. Don't petition. We've already got them indicted. Just hold up the indictment. The genocide order will work. Slap that down in your case if you're in some court case. Just give it to them and then, you know, notify our law enforcement, which is everywhere. We have a better business model. We don't kill our employees, nor do we snake their retirements at the last second or whack them when we want their estates. <laughs> these are, these are the secret and actions of psychopathy. Did you see that IMPD officer arrested? Nope, go ahead and read that one. This is from the uh, wishtv.com. Police IMPD officer arrested in Indianapolis. Indiana State Police arrested an Indianapolis metro Metropolitan Police Department officer on Thursday. IMPD officer Andrew Tyler has been placed on administrative leave with no police powers pending an internal investigation. No further information on this investigation on why Tyler was arrested has been released as of Thursday night. 
it's an interesting uh, little thing there, no information, but we'll see what comes out in the next few days. Uh, from abc.net.au, former disability service worker charged with sexually abusing cognitively impaired client. A former worker at Victoria's largest government disability service is facing multiple charges of sexually abusing a cognitively impaired client. Timothy Hampson, 51, faces five charges of sexual penetration of a person with a cognitive impairment and five of taking part in an indecent act. Two of the charges date back to 2005. The rest are alleged to have occurred between January and May of this year. The victim, who is cognitively impaired, was attending a Urala facility to take part in an education program at the time of the alleged assaults. A Urala spokesperson said that Mr. Hampson was sacked after the allegations were made against him and the victim and their family have been offered support and counseling. Mr. Hampson was also charged with three counts of theft. He was released on bail until October 24th. Watch out for this guy, folks. He's on the loose. From NewYorkTimes.com, U.S. seizes assets tra traced to South Korean ex-president. The United States Justice Department has seized $500,000 of foreign trace to former President Chun Doo Hwan of South Korea, who was convicted in South Korea court in 1997 of accepting more than $200 million in bribes while in office from 1980 to 1988. The cash was seized from an investment in a limited partnership made by Mr. Chun's daughter-in-law. The partnership funded Philadelphia area economic development projects through a program that offered a tr foreign tr investors United States visas in exchange for the investment of $500,000 FRNs. So the United States Incorporated just seized the assets that came through the United States Incorporated bribing the South Korean president, folks. So they bribed the president and now they're taking that money back. Which is very interesting and the works of the thugs, of course. Interesting twist. They, they cash in, but hand over fist everywhere. There's nothing that they will not do. I've never seen anything as vicious as Congress. He's it's just disgusting. And they're always pointing the finger back at at you. Oh, you're causing global warming. Oh, you're killing everybody. We have to come in and protect you. You know, of course, we talked about how that works. Now the story here. Animals and plants are dying off a thousand times faster than 60 million years ago, and humans are to blame, claim scientists. Well, I think they're mixing up humans, uh, human beings, anyways, with corporations. Corporations are to blame if there is any man-made global warming it's not man-made global warming it's corporation made global warming it's because they're specialized through that 14th amendment yes this is global thanks to the Atlantic Charter okay and, and the uh, corporations rights are reserved over the human beings okay and that's why they can get away with well, dumping sludge and slime and poisons into your rivers and water tables and get away with it continually not only are uh, they doing that but they're also releasing all these uh, so-called greenhouse gases at at, at, at the race our human beings driving around in their cars are not going to change the carbon content in the atmosphere one you know anything compared to what one uh, Let's put this into perspective. One volcanic eruption will put more carbon in the atmosphere than all the cars uh, driving, you know, since their inception have put into the air. Okay? That's just nature. That's how much carbon these things dump out when they explode. Uh, so, but the anyways. the corporations are just absolutely polluting everything, and they need to be stopped. Yeah, 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 you want to talk about carbon emissions from vehicles, what about these Abram tanks and A310s and all these, you know, uh, 
two fighter jets for every airplane full of attorneys that they want to bring down. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Anyways, so finishing this up, uh, Brown University Scientists of Province, you know, our glorious scientists who paid by the uh, funding from the U.S. Incorporated, by the Rand. way. Rand, it's the Defense Corp uh, Corporation of the U.S. Incorporated. Anyway, so they claimed that they found that pre-human extinction rate was ten times lower than scientists had believed, which means that the current level is ten times worse. Well, yeah. yeah it is worse, a... but it's made worse by corporations. You know, we Every are global warming story that I ever see is always geared at uh, pointing it back to, you know, the human beings being the problem. When, indeed, it's... Again, the corporations. Right. How many ants are there on the planet? But, you know, you look at the, the amount of human beings that are on this planet in comparison to its area. And, and we are not that large of a population of anything. We really aren't. And it's the corporations that are just mucking it up for, for all life on this planet. Uh, let's see here. Democratic chair apologizes for claiming Republican Governor Scott Walker gives woman the back of his hand. In a roundtable discussion on women's issues, the Democratic Party leader also accused Walker and his allies of grabbing us by the hair and pulling us back. More, you know, yeah, pitting one against another. So got a federal immigration enforcement agent charged with DWI after crash on Verrazano Narrows Bridge, cops say, Staten Island, New York, a federal immigration enforcement agent faces drunken driving charges after she hit a concrete barrier on the Verrazano uh, Narrows Bridge Tuesday morning, according to the police. Uh, Kristen S. Kraus, 30 of Belmar Drive in New Springsville, was driving at two, uh, 2006 Chevy Monte Carlo at about 12.40 a.m. Police allege when she hit the barrier on the Staten Island bound side of the upper level, the Triborough Bridge and the Tunnel Authority officers saw what happened and followed Miss Cross's car, pulling it over at the toll plaza. I had two beers, Miss Cross allegedly told officers, according to the court papers. Her blood alcohol content measured at 0.149%. Uh, that's a little bit more than two beers. Nearly twice the 0.08% threshold for driving while intoxicated charge, according to the information from District Attorney Daniel Donovan's office. Miss Cross a special agent with U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Uh, we are aware of the incident and it is being investigated internally by the ICE's Office of Professional Responsibility. Oh, so we can rest easy now with yeah. the with the uh, fox guard in the hen house. Yeah, Additionally, uh, additional requests <coughs> for information regarding the local case should be directed at the NYPD, said ICE spokesman Luis Martinez. Ms. Krause was arraigned Tuesday in Stapleton Criminal Court and ordered released on her own recognizance because, uh, or until her next court date on October 30th. Yeah, I'll let her get out there and stir up some more business. Maybe she should be uh, doing some more drunk driving. Yeah. She might even kill somebody, then we can really get a good case. Sick. 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 I mean, that's how they think. <coughs> Ah, uh, sick people out there, too. It's not always just um, attorneys, but uh, let's see. Man faces death penalty after he slit ex-girlfriend's five-year-old daughter's throat. Oh, that's terrible. That's a horrible story, I know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so he faces capital Absolutely. murder charges. Miguel Dela Cruz, or Isidro. Miguel de la Cruz Jr. Uh, yeah, pictured capital here. Capital murder, the, that's, that's all there is. If you murder somebody, you're facing capital murder. That's it. That's it. 
You know, it's like, I'm not going to play any games. I mean, I, what kind of sick mind is that? Sure. You know, sitting in the throat of a five-year-old. A baby. Naya Villegas in San Angelo, Texas. And, um, yeah. Uh, Just sick. Yeah, from uh, smh.com.au, New South Wales here. Media fight suppression order over mystery emails at ICAC. Media organizations have joined forces at a corruption inquiry to fight a suppression order over a controversial chain of emails involving a, quote, very well-known person, end quote, and a liberal identity. The emails headed R.E. Carbon Tax were suppressed at the Independent Commission Against Corruption on Thursday after questions were raised whether, about whether publishing the documents would breach parliamentary privilege. No, there is no such thing. Evidence is evidence. That is the use of attorney work product doctrine, and that's not allowed or under the public law in any way. So that's already a violation of public law. Robert Newland's S.C., the barrister for NSW Liberal Senator and former President Arthur Sinodinos, wrote to the ICAC to alert the commission to the potential breach. So he's the one that's trying to get everything all hush-hush. Quote, the letter we wrote simply said that we were somewhat perturbed that there may be a breach by counsel assisting Jeffrey Watson, S.C., and the commissions of the Federal Parliamentary Privileges Act, end quote, Mr. Newlands told the hearing on Thursday afternoon. Quote, I really don't want to say out loud what the topic is because the private individual is a very well-known person. I just don't want this to get out. Can we at least have a suppression order about the debate, end quote. The hearing was closed to the public while the matter was discussed. No, that's not under public law. Come on. Anyway, so we'll update everybody later on this corruption investigation. They're trying to shut it down. Uh, you know, Rick Perry tried to do the same thing, and, and he's under indictment, and that's what we'd like to see in Australia as well. Uh, that's coming, folks. We're getting there. Yeah, and that tweet is off the sent out earlier this week. Uh, of course, he's you know, back, uh, you know, at that, he says, uh, that that wasn't his doing, uh, and, you know, they were just trying to make the prosecutor look bad, uh, uh, you know, the DUI is bad, I guess, it's bad enough, um, uh, although, she didn't you know, harm she didn't harm anybody, although, that's her elected form of government under the Atlantic Charter, right, but she so that's why she's going to be, uh, Charged for commercial crimes there. Well, and but he now, wanted her to shut up too because she was the one that was coming up against him and trying to prosecute. Right. So it was a it was a nice opportunity there to demonize the prosecutor. Right. They called out the Convenient. thugs. Convenient. Yep. Called out the thugs. Thugs went out and happened to find her uh, drunk or whatever. But it's the same thugs that are investigating the case and determining whether or not she was drunk because the people don't know how to run those things and. People don't know this and that's and that it's classic fall guy uh, use of the fall guy. It's just a class classic politics. Classic. Yeah, let's see. Of course, we had that uh, cop in Sydney. Is it Sydney, Australia? I'm just going from memory now. The one the they knew he was gonna. Do something because the cops are watching him. I read it. I'll, I'll get to the link in a little bit, I guess. American University professor is arrested for breaking into a shopping mall parking garage and starting a fire. This this sounds like a, a guarantee insurance story. Absolutely. It was on behalf of the corporation that was going to make the insurance claim. And Professor David Pitts, who chairs the Department of Public Administration and Policy, was charged with burglary and destruction of property. Oh, no, he got caught for doing his job. That's terrible. Oh, no. Yeah, I thought that... Timber! Yeah, that one's got guarantee insurance written all over it. And, and you'll want to go back if you haven't seen 
the videos and I put them all together in one called uh, Guaranteed Insurance, the documentary, I think, is what I called it. And it's got three stories in there all put, put together to show you how this guarantee insurance works. Um, from the crime.com, infamous speed trap, town investigated over tickets. That's a major, major win for, of course, the United States. I really, I like these stories now. This is in Waldo, Florida, according to the AP. North Florida town of Waldo has long had a reputation as a speed trap, and it's no wonder. A small segment of highway that runs through the Waldo requires drivers to speed up and slow down six times, 65 miles per per hour becomes 55 miles per hour, 55 becomes 45, then goes back to 55, then back down to 45, to 55 again, and eventually 35. Okay, AAA named the tiny town between uh, Jacksonville and Gainesville, one of only two traffic traps nationwide, and even placed an attention-getting billboard outside the limits of the town to Warn drivers to slow down before entering. Right. The other one was the, was in it south of Chicago, over there in Illinois. And so, uh, so now uh, Waldo faces a scandal following allegations that the town victimizes motorists to turn a profit. Two police chiefs have been suspended. The police department has re rebelled. And the state investigation, and, uh, and the state is investigating possible wrongdoing. It's funny that the police department rebelled against the Confederate Confederacy. It's yeah. Interesting. It's interesting. I wonder what happens when Confederate Army turns on it, the Confederates. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the situation simmered for years until this month when Police Chief Mike Scosbo, uh Sabo was suspended August 12th, apparently in response to an investigation by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement into suspected improprieties uh, in the way officers write tickets. Issue then burst into the open two weeks later at a Waldo City Council meeting when a group of police officers said they had been ordered by Sabo to write at least 12 tickets per 12 hour shift or face repercussions. Oh, these are beautiful officers. Officers also leveled allegations at the August 26th meeting against Corporal Kenneth Smith, who had been picked to fill in for Sabo. The officers complained that Smith had, among other things, mishandled evidence. The city council then suspended Smith. Not right. surprisingly, things are tense at the tiny stucco storefront office that serves as Waddle's City Hall. Yeah, things are really heating up out there. On Friday morning, Mayor Louis Davis and City Manager Kim Worley met in a small, cluttered office to discuss the controversy, slamming a door shut with no comment. Uh, when a reporter walked in seeking information. Waldo has a long reputation as a speed trap, but the allegations made by the police officers were uh, particularly stunning since ticket quotas are illegal under Florida law. Um, but see, in a policy, though, it's not. And policy is really what these critters are driven by because uh, that's how they keep their jobs. Right. Did you notice that word they used? Did they just call attorneys trover? I believe they did. They used the word controversy in there. Right. They just called attorneys trover. It's interesting. In 2013, Waldo's seven police officers filed 11,603 traffic citations according to to the records obtained by Gainesville Sun Attorney newspaper. That compares with 25,461 citations in 2013 for much larger Gainesville, which has 300 officers and 128,000 residents, including 
thousands of college students. Wow, those attorneys were using those officers as whipping boys. That's a hell of a quota. They were being tortured, probably working on the death 24 hours a day to, to maintain that type of a quota. I'd say, yeah. It's terrible. Those attorneys need to be flogged. Flog those attorneys that were using law enforcement as whipping boys and thank the good Lord God that those officers came out and let everybody know what's going on. Yeah. With these with these attorneys need on their desks are like cash registers. Right. Uh that'd make it more obvious anyways. The fines paid by motorists are a uh, big money maker. According to the city's 2013 budget, about half of its $1 million in revenue came from court fines from tickets issued. After council appearance, officers filed a complaint with the Florida Inspector General's Office seeking protection under the Florida Whistleblowers Act. Under the uh, genocide order, don't we pay law enforcement something like uh, 6,000 ounces of gold a month? That's right, because we set it up in lawful money. Absolutely. Yeah, they need to come over and work for the other side. Yeah, the uh, Confederacy is a losing business proposition at this point. Yeah, it's terrible. So, you know, and I mean, hey, hey, take your choice, uh, uh, law enforcement out there, okay, globally, worldwide, all right, you can either work to enforce the public law, which is all about the well-being of humanity. For 10% of all assets and revenue. Yeah. On top of the administrative cost of running law enforcement office, offices, which is 6,000 ounces of gold a month. Which takes care of all of the overhead. Simply put, it's more. Yeah. A lot more. Before that, under the Deputy Participation Program, each county was getting less than 1%, 0.82% to share with all of the officers, which is contradictory to the original... Uh, set up from the House of Lords at the separation of the spiritual and temporal, which gave everything to the sheriff and uh, didn't give anything to our attorneys. Attorneys are just so bad, 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 bad. Now, so on the other side of the coin, if you want to continue to be a privateer and shake down, uh, you know, innocent uh, civilians. For commercial crimes at the behest of the attorneys to offset congressional bankruptcy, then you're going to find yourselves being held accountable for all sorts of things, oh, as we yeah. see at policemisconduct.net daily. And yeah, and that's that's another thing. If, if you're caught, if you're an agent of the federal state, for example, and you're caught and and brought to accountability, uh, if you're a transgressor, it's your weight in gold that is owed to the person or entity being that you have transgressed upon and, and uh, it's very interesting those kind of things because as we're seeing you know yeah, these officers are being picked up and, and adjudicated now yeah. darn the luck darn the luck accountability of come up oh my goodness where do you run? These agents are like going you're crazy. barely okay you while well, you're barely yeah you're barely scraping the Make ends meet. We stuck. We, we covered a story uh, not long ago about this woman who worked herself to death, working um, three jobs or five jobs or something like that. She's working 24/7, like for five days straight, and she finally just fell asleep in her car with her car running and fixated herself. She essentially she worked herself to death. Right. Now compare that with the, this story here: a married Canadian banking heir. 27, pays $80,000 to kiss Elizabeth Hurley, uh, and his wife is totally cool with it. But, you know, I just show you how these, these bankers got all this money to throw away on stupid nonsense. And then, uh... So many people are going hungry and homeless and hurting and working minimum wage jobs in the, in the military. I mean, it was not even two weeks ago when it said the majority of food bank... Uh, habituals that, that, that uh, go to the food bank are military families on active duty. Why are these military families so destitute? Why have they fallen on hard times? Well, because their federal government puts them on hard times through fourth generation warfare tactics. Uh, it's just 
Foul. Foul, foul, foul. Julia Barty pictured here with the, uh, she's a 49 year old actress and swimmer designer was the top bidder in a charity auction at Elton John's annual ball at his home near Windsor last night the married father of three who has homes in Canada Beverly Hills and Florida seemed happy to make the most of the opportunity to embrace the bedazzled, bedazzled star and today laughed off suggestions his wife of five years, Christy, might have minded. The kiss was greeted by whoops and cheers from the celebrity crowd at Sir Elton's party, where guests included Chrissy Hind, Ellie Golding, Tamara Beckwith, and James Blunt. But, uh, yeah, uh... Charity. Usually these charities are a big scam in the first place anyways. It doesn't say what kind of charity here, but... Uh, really? I mean, come on. Got people... You know. It's, it just makes me sick. The disparity is just sickening to me. That's all it is. Uh, let's see here. The pathetic end. The predictable end for Bob McDonald. Okay. Uh, from the Washington Post, all right, uh, in March 2012, I ranked the 10 most likely Republican vice president pitch, picks for GOP nominee Mitt Romney, okay, and this must be the writer talking, of course, Bob McDonald ranked second on that list. Today, roughly two and a half years later, the former Virgin Virginia governor was found guilty on 11 charges of public corruption tied to his and his wife's relationship with a donor named Johnny R. Williams Sr. While it's always dangerous to call anything in politics the largest and most rapid collapse in modern memory, the fall from political grace for McDonald is absolutely stunning and ensures his spot in the ign ignominious annals of disgraced politicians with national ambitions right alongside John Edwards. That's even more remarkable for me than McDonald's collapse. However, or what's even more remarkable for the McDonald's collapse, however, is a combination of stupidity, avarice, and total political blindness that led him to this day. Oh, I love this. This writer, it's just, it's Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. She's going into depth on, uh, you know, the fall of Rome. How how Pilate falls down. Wow. He just got too big for his bridges. I'll continue on here. What's even more? Um, oh, oops. You uh, stopped there. McDonald had long ta been touted to me by Republicans in the know as a rising star. He was socially conservative, but not in a way that scared establishment Republicans or independents. He was a gifted communicator who knew how to stay on a message. And most importantly, he had the, quote, it factor, a combination of charisma and common touch that made people take notice. The talk grew when McDonald's was elected state attorney general in 2005 and soared when he crushed state senator Craig Deeds, writing a quote, Bob's for Jobs slogan to become the Commonwealth's governor in 2009. And for much of his term, McDonald appro McDonald's approval numbers seemed to defy the gravity that was dragging down other rising star politicians around the country. Think Nikki Hale in South Carolina, Scott Walker in Wisconsin, and John K Kasich in Ohio circa 2011-2012. That reputation and his demonstrated record of political and policy success was m what made Ross Halderman's initial reporting about the McDonald's relationship with Williams all the more stunning. The couple had accepted shopping sprees, elaborate wedding gifts, stays in fancy vacation homes, rides in expensive cars, straight cash and watches, among many, many other things. The list of what the McDonald's took from Williams really has to be seen to be believed. Here it is. You click there for the list, and 
it's so it, it's absolutely astounding what these politicians up until this point in time uh, were, were actually uh, you know delving into do you have that list ball um let's see if I can read this right the, all of the gifts and stuff that they had been given um, there's an engraved Rolex 2011 New York City shopping trip $50,000 loans uh, trips to Cape Cod yard work flight to Final Four dinner at La Grotta Florida vacation plane tickets $70,000 in loans $15,000 wedding catering trip to Williams Lake home golf trip uh, more golf trips, golf trips, flight on private planes, $10,000 engagement check, plane tickets, two golf bags, golf clubs, watercolors, two iPhones, and uh, you know it, it's nice to see that they were actually found guilty of corruption because they were not there for humanity. That is absolutely evidence by their works and uh, bu bu bye. We watched them though. They were pit up against each other. Those attorneys did a great job. They they were both at each other's throats at the end there. I wasn't sure if they were gonna stick together, um, you know, and, and defeat this thing. But sure enough, they were able to be turned against each other and they both ratted each other out in the end. Husband and wife, can you believe that? I mean it's so sad when when they turn on each other for money. Yeah, I'm just crying so bad here. Are you crying? It's just it's so sad because that's their that's just them. That's their everything, everything they are. That's all they do all day long is pray and pray and pray on each other and everybody else and that's what they get off on. I mean, it's, it's just profound, profound. And and they they thought that the end would never come. I think that's. The most interesting thing is that these are these are very well educated folks. Remember the whole mark on the door in the Bible and removal of the firstborn son, and they use some pedagogy against entire populaces to educate them according to your Department of Defense directives to maintain them as sheeple. And uh, you know n none of that stuff worked out so well for them. You know they spent a lot of time indoctrinating sheeple and grooming them into be great product and nice little slaves on a farm and it, it just oh man it just crapped the bed crapped the bed yeah that's kind of the uh, theme here as of late Terrible. they're 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 pooping themselves Kingston City Court judge charge in custody dispute and let's see here, they they uh, post the uh, accusatory instrument here at the Daily Freeman, the police news, all right, and um, let's see here, Kingston City Court Judge Lawrence Ball has been charged in Kingston City Court in an apparent dispute with his estranged wife six, uh, sixth ward elder woman Elisa Ball according to a complaint filed in Kingston City Court on August 6. The complaint alleges that on August 6 at about 4 p.m. Judge Ball did intentionally and knowingly commit the misdemeanor of criminal contempt was signed by a city police lieutenant filed in Kingston City Court and then transferred to and received by the Hudson City Court on August 14th. According to Alderwoman Ball's complaint, Judge Ball picked up the couple's three children, Connor, Parker, and Turner, on August 6th without her permission and in violation of a state Supreme Court order giving the Alderwoman custody of the children during summer break. Okay. Balls are in the process of divorcing, according to Ulster County Clerk Nina Postapak, who confirmed that their divorce papers are on file in their office. Hudson City County Clerk Rosemary Zukowski said the judge, Ball, was not arraigned in Hudson. She said a court date 
will not be set until we figure out the logistics of who's prosecuting the case. We can't calendar uh, the case, she said. An Ulster County court clerk declined to comment and referred calls to the state of office, state office of court administration. Asked whether Judge Ball will be removed from the bench as a result of the arrest. David Bookstaver of the state office of court administration said, This may be a matter for the state commission on judicial conduct. Commission spokeswoman Marissa Harrison said proceedings of the commission are confidential and she cannot confirm, deny, or comment unless and until a judge is disciplined, admonished, censored, or removed by State Court of Appeals after a recommendation by the Commission. Yeah. Unless you're doing it to the public law. You know, there's a difference between the public law and acts of commerce and private acts. And, uh, you know, eventually, you learn it's uh, quite interesting to see this judge being charged with these things, and um, I think he found himself in Eve, which is very ironic. Let's see, I just pulled up one here. Um, oh, you want to read that one here? I'll, I'll, I'll read this one next. Uh, Okay. Let's see. Uh, High court disqualifies Cuyahoga judge charged with kidnapping and assault. Um, High court disqualifies Cuyahoga judge charged with kidnapping and assault. The, the Ohio Supreme Court says that Cuyahoga County Common Pleas judge is disqualified from hearing cases after a grand jury issued of a five count felony indictment against him. Judge Lance Mason was indicted by the grand jury Tuesday. He was arrested on August 2nd after allegedly biting and punching his wife as they drove through a suburb with their young daughters in the back seat. Disgusting. Mason was indicted on two first degree felony counts of kidnapping and three second degree felony counts of felonious assault. He was also indicted on misdemeanor counts of domestic violence and endangering children. Mason will remain disqualified while the indictments are pending. Good. Yeah, we don't want him doing anything else or going anywhere, do we? Shit. Right, right. And, and on, on, all the, on the same page here, from the WKSU.org news, uh, uh, more charges filed in massive credit union fraud case. Toledo water official resigns following water crisis. Uh, and Ohio family wants federal investigation into police shooting. Wow. Lots of corrupt activity down there. Over there. Where's this at? Ohio? Well, over there. It's interesting. Right. It's interesting. St. Louis attorney arrested on charges of hindering prosecution. Uh, this is uh, brand new from five hours ago. St. Louis criminal defense attorney is jailed in St. Franklin County and and accused of interfering with a felony case. St. Franklin County prosecuting attorney Jared Marin charged Brian Christopher Edwards, 44, with the Class D felony of hindering prosecution. Bail was set at $25,000 and he was ordered to surrender his passport. According to court records, Edwards presented Jessica Weaver in two criminal cases, one a federal case and the other two felony counts of distribution of controlled substance in St. Frank Coy County. Charge against Edwards of the 3900 block of Potomac Street alleges he had an intimate relationship with Weaver while he was incarcerated in the county jail. She was released from jail on July 21st and remanded to the custody of a treatment facility in St. Louis as a condition of her federal probation. 
Uh, yeah. And let's see. Weaver uh, arrived there at the end of July and left on August 1st. A probation violation warrant for her arrest was issued August 14th, alleging Weaver had fled the area in fear of being turned over to police. Holy cow. Yeah, just another yeah. attorney trying Can to hide, escape? huh? Escape? The 1929 Geneva Convention. There's no escape. No. no. Not even if you whittle off your fingerprints. Remember that one last week? Yeah. She was, she was really working hard at escape. Uh, Florida judge charged with over a dozen instances of improper conduct. That was neat because it's found on Jezebel.com. Can you believe that? Jezebel.com is going off on judges. Jezebel.com. Yeah, remember? The, it's written in the text. Earlier this year, Circuit Judge Linda Schoonover was removed from a case after sending one of her litigants a friend request on Facebook and then allegedly retaliating against the litigant when her request was denied. Well, apparently, Schoonover was uh, has quite a record of ethical wrongdoing, like more than a dozen, and is attempting to have them all thrown out. It's crazy. Yeah. She's insane. An appellate court has moved a judge from the case after it was revealed she sent a Facebook friend request. On August 25, the Judicial Qualifications Commission formally charged Schoonover with more than a dozen instances of improper conduct ranging from bizarre to disruptive to displaying paranoia via raw story. Yeah, I remember that uh, Judge Simon says in my U.S. Uh, district court case says that uh, the, the, the uh, you know, uh, entries were uh, bizarre. Yes, I love that. He couldn't yeah, understand so them. You know, and he's the one coming back after he was... Uh, Recused, right. coming back in there as a lad at right? Saying all this stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to say. He no. didn't even have any standing to say anything. Yeah, absolutely. I guess that's why they sent him back in there to, right? You know, yeah, try to that. recontract or something. I, he did that with the, of his own volition because it, he knew at that moment in time it was his butt on the line, and that uh, Andrew Seward had already thrown it for everybody. I mean, he threw it for everybody. Uh, he didn't or. Uh, uh, argue any authorization, he didn't argue any proclamation, he didn't argue the indemnity of the United States Incorporated, he just let it happen while he protected his own interests, which is very interesting. Here's another hot story out the press, Deputy L.A. City Attorney arrested on suspicion of possessing, distributing child pornography. Ugh. Uh, Deputy Los Angeles City Attorney has been arrested and charged in, with possession of child pornography. Uh, Authority said Friday, Christopher Richard Garcia, 57, was arrested Thursday afternoon at his home in San Pedro and booked on suspicion of possessing and distributing child pornography, said Officer Liliana Preciado, a spokesman for the Los Angeles Police Department. Garcia had been under investigation since at least November when authorities served a search warrant at his home and seized computers and other electronic evidence, Presado said. At the time, they found some questionable images. Sick. So. Sick. Glad to see he's off the street. I just do. Sick. Just do this. I mean, you know, I never found these kind of stories a couple years back. You know, just do your own search on the internet. Search under a, uh, a attorney arrested or a judge arrested, and you know, whittle down the features. You know, to include words like uh, court, charge, arrest, um, for possible words, and 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 just do it within the last 24 hours, and you get all these stories coming up anymore. Also, use the words. I got too many to cover. Right. Use the words found dead too, because that's always interesting. As a whack each other or. Uh, you know, it, it just, it's profound, profound. Oh, yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah, and that one in St. Louis, you know, it, it's right there uh, near Ferguson, of course. Yep. yep. Uh, Fellsburg Municipal Court judge charged with driving under the influence after being all over the road on Interstate 78, please say. Fellsburg Municipal Judge Dennis Bet. Tista was described as an erratic driver on Interstate 78 
when New Jersey State Police stopped him last month and charged him with driving under the influence, police spokeswoman said. Trooper Alina Spies said police at the Perrysville Barracks were alerted August 22nd to an erratic driver traveling west on the highway. Police stopped Baptista about 7.20 p.m. at mile marker 19.1 in Clinton Township. The vehicle was described as a black Lincoln sedan. And that was all over the road, Spies said. Police charged Baptista, 57, at the time with driving while intoxicated and failure to maintain his lane, Spies said. He was pulled over on the suspicion of being under the influence of alcohol. The state police do not release driver's blood alcohol content, she said. And that's funny, they did in that other story. Baptista of Phillipsburg did not immediately return phone messages left at his listed home number requesting comment. Phillipsburg Mayor Harry Wyant Jr. said Baptista hasn't been on the bench for two weeks and is expected back September 10th. So they're letting him back? Baptista is still being paid, the mayor said. So that's sick enough. Baptista has not been asked by the presiding judge or the state administration office, the state administrative office of the courts to step down. In the United States and in this state, you're innocent until proven guilty. Wait, he already did it. He was caught doing it. He already did it. It's done. Uh, it, it, there's no such thing as as uh, attorney work product doctor anymore. You know, it doesn't work like that. Pharmacist arrested in meningitis case from the Indian Gazette. Wow. Yeah. That's what we've always known. I mean, when Carolina went in there, um, I had a friend who had a very, very heavy uh, Venezuelan accent. Well, she had really large breasts, and she was contemplating a breast reduction surgery, and she went to a general practitioner who at the time... Uh, she said she was having migraines because her breasts were so large. I mean, large, large, like, uh, I think she was like a double Q, Q or something. I mean, it was large enough that it, it caused headaches. The GP told her that she probably has, and I quote, be, based on her Venezuelan accent, quote, chronic meningitis and wanted to do a spinal tap. But she came out of there, and I and I told her, Carolina, to just wait a couple of days. There's no such thing as chronic meningitis, and of course she survived because she never had meningitis. However, that doctor was going to do a spinal tap and give it to her if she bought the original advertisement telling her that she had a form of something that does not exist. Well, this one here in the uh, well, I guess it's the Indiana Gazette. No, I thought this, okay, I thought this is something else. Okay, Boston. Um, a pharmacist who oversaw the sterile clean rooms at a Massachusetts compounding pharmacy responsible for a deadly meningitis outbreak was arrested Thursday as he was about to board a flight for Hong Kong, federal officials wow. said. he was going to escape. Glenn Adam Chen, former supervisory pharmacist at the New England compounding center, didn't properly sterilize or test equipment, and concealed the unsafe practices, federal investigators said. Pharmacy, which custom makes medications in bulk, has been blamed for a 2012 outbreak of fungal meningitis that killed 64 people. About 750 people in uh, developing, uh, they developed meningitis, and in Inflammation of the lining of the brain and spinal cord infections. Right, and usually what happens is you have a migraine cr created usually from like dehydration or something. And if a doctor wants to diagnose you with meningitis, they ask to do a spinal tap, and that's when they give it to you based on your initial complaint of a headache or a severe headache or uh, fatigue, body aches, and stuff, which have uh, other causes. Uh, I urge everybody to stop getting these spinal taps and things. I mean, it's, it's always been a gimmick. Um, you got to stay away from it. I learned, you know, quite uh, interestingly enough with that experience with Carolina that it's all a show.
Yeah, Michigan, Tennessee, and Indiana were hit the hardest. Chin 46 of Canton was arrested at Logan International Airport. He was charged with one count of mail fraud. The federal prosecutor said it was part of a larger criminal investigation of Chin and others. He is the first person to be charged in the inquiry, so there's more to come. During a brief federal court hearing Thursday afternoon, Assistant U.S. Attorney uh, George Varghis said the investigation was ongoing and we're looking at Mr. Chin for a host of other criminal conduct, he said. So. Fall guy for the genocidal program here. The Columbus Dispatch has a story of trying to get up. The headline reads, uh, Perry County Judge with anti-drinking and driving message arrested after hit and run. Wow. Uh, what a pillar of society there. Yeah, see if I can maybe get this page to load here. Um, while we're waiting for that, Rick Perry might go away for a long, long time. What even the liberal media isn't reporting about his indictment. This is from the salon.com. And of course, they picture his pretty little mug shot there with the tie. You know, isn't that nice? He, he looks had, like a serial killer. Remember he made an appointment. It's like he showed up for a, 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 photo, a, 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 a photography shoot for his mug shot. You know, I mean, right. he's in that nice tie right. and he's got a nice smile and everything. Right. Uh, they need to put one of those red polka dotted ties on. Remember Problem Child when they dress up the serial killer in the little. Time. At least in 2012, Rick Perry uh, realized he'd forgotten the name of the federal department he wanted to abolish, but when it comes to charges he is he's just been indicted for, he's certain of what they are. Bribery, he said in New Hampshire recently, but he's wrong. It's not exactly a strong position to start from if you're going to loudly proclaim your innocence. At least he's got one thing right. I don't really understand the details he added. And that Perry is far from alone. Few, if any, of his high-profile defenders, either left or right, seem to understand much more than he does. Still, you don't have to be a lawyer to at least have some idea of what he's being charged. Uh, or what, what's being charged. The indictment is online for anyone to read. And it's not that hard to understand. One count for abuse of official capacity and the other for coercion of a public official. Yet few in the national media seem to have figured that out. Glenn W. Smith is the director for Progress Texas PAC, so he knows a thing or two about the Lone Star State. He was also part of Governor Lackoff's Rockbridge Institute. So he's got a broader intellectual perspective as well, just the combination one would want for perspective uh, on what's going on here. Right, it's just, <coughs> <coughs> it's interesting, excuse me folks, to see all of these things that are, you know, going on. And, and you know, again, these are hardcore charges. Corruption in any form of government is treason against the, its citizens bottom line and um, you know trafficking the citizens children is another form of treason it's it's your enemy having come upon you to kidnap you and your children and hold them hostage under action of bail from rt.com Canadians involved in kidnappings, torture of U.S. journalists in the report. At least three Canadian nationals who joined the Al-Qaeda-linked group, militant group in Syria were responsible for holding and brutally interrogating U.S. journalists Theo Curtis and Matt Schreier, CBS reported. The identities of the three are not known, nor have they been captured, according to Canadian media. Citing sources, CBC said the three Canadians interrogated the U.S. journalists to obtain computer passwords and pins. The captors stole from the journalists' banking accounts and wrote cruel letters to family members pretending to be the hostages. They also used credit cards to buy electronic equipment on eBay. Curtis and Schreier were held in captivity between 2011 and 2013. 
Shire escaped from his kidnappers last year while Curtis was released by the jihadist Al Nursa Front Group last month. Now remember, these are Canadian FBI agents, Canadian nationals. The Canadian government earlier estimated that around 130 Canadians have joined extremist groups overseas. Yes, they know exactly how many of their FBI agents work for as these extremist groups. That is what the FBI is. It is whatever extremist group is necessary to sell you enough fear that you join with them in participation by patronizing a government. That's the function of the FBI on the ground. It's just, uh, these are interesting days. They're being charged for doing their jobs. And again, I mean, this week has been just so profound with all of these idiot agents. Constantly, constantly, no, it's really not happening. No, it's really not happening. And like, you, you know, you're, you're sitting ducks. You are sitting ducks. And they're, it's just, uh, these are amazing days, and I have, I, I always thought they were intellectual, you know, the FBI agents that go through all of these schools and, and learn all of these things, and they absolutely are not, as by evidence, by their own works and actions. They're watching their peers be cannibalized by their handlers day after day and, and they, you know, they're not going anywhere they're not uh, they're thinking they're safe and comfortable in the arms of this illusion that they have painted in their minds another one from rt.com this week I wanted to touch on the uh, one DNA clears North Carolina's longest serving death row inmate and his half brother this is absolutely deplorable. North Carolina on Wednesday released an inmate who has served three decades on death row a day after declaring he and his half-brother were innocent in the 1983 rape and murder of an 11-year-old girl. That is sick that the attorneys would do this again and again and get away with railroading human beings into the chute for the actions of these FBI agents. That's who's always on the ground killing kids, as we just all witnessed in Ferguson, Missouri, as the officer involved created all of these false pictures and false images and tried to justify the murder, and in reality, that's just business. That's what they do. We're about out of time, Bo. Do you have anything to add as a party word? Well, uh, I mean, uh, I, really, as we're observing here, the the mainstream media is starting to shift over and tell you some truth here. So uh, it's not just the alternative media that's that's coming out with these stories now so uh it's very interesting and you know so don't feel uh like you only have to look at the alternative media right now i think you know i mean right. we're now, gonna we're gonna stay here as long as it takes right but, but it looks is, like it is adhering to the public law now and and um i haven't seen any half troops in a very long time very long time uh, you know it started turning last october and then uh, it's it's quite amazing. Every once in a while, there's a false flag, but they're they're very apparent. Yeah, uh, we're gonna have a ton more this week, I'm sure too. So I guess tune in Wednesday for the Bo and Rocco show, Thursdays and Saturdays. I guess uh, tomorrow, tomorrow Absolutely. you'll be doing a show. Um, Leaving the farm. 6 to 8 uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, right here. What's that? That's just late night uh, over there across the pan pond for them, right? It's yeah, like. Uh, it's not too, too late. 1, one to 3 GMT. And uh, we'll be right Well, not tomorrow, though. Tomorrow it's uh, your show 6 to 8, so that would be. Um, oh, yeah, 11 to 1, sorry. It's 5 hours. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep, 11 to 1. Yeah, 11 to 1. GMT, so. We'll take everybody out with nobody home.